Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, a demo of a semi-abstract mountain uh, ridge uh, with an eagle soaring high up in the sky. And while I paint this demo uh, very freely, mostly wet in wet, starting off with my board flat for a change and then tilting it later, I'm going to be talking about something that I think is one of the most important things to think about um, when you're painting in watercolour, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate, um, it's really important to think to yourself about tonal value and contrasts um, and how they relate to the way that you decide to use colour in your paintings. Now, obviously, we, most of us, see the world in multicolours as we experience it. Um, we see it in, in bright light, in dark shadows, um, during the night, and the light reflected on the landscape um, produces amazing shadows and contrasts and heat hazes and mists and light and dark and all kinds of interesting effects um, which changes the way that we experience um, our view of the world and how we see the colours that we we see in front of us. I mean we all know for example that mostly unless it's very dry that grass is mostly green and brown that trees are green um, most of the time until autumn um, when they then become sort of gold, brown, red and orange, etc, etc. But is colour the most important thing? That's the question. Now, as always with these rambling videos of mine, um, please note this is only my opinion um, and it's not more valid than anybody else's opinion. Um, we all have different views on these sorts of things, which is why there's such a wonderful range of exciting and interesting and different art out there. Uh, but in my view, I think that contrast is far more important than colour. When I first started um, painting in watercolour, I think I made what is a major sort of rookie mistake, which is not really using enough paint. Um, even when I was painting on small pieces of watercolour paper, um, there was always something a bit sort of lacking in um, the, the overall look of my paintings. And it wasn't just that I wasn't very experienced, it was that I was... Um, doing nearly all of my paintings in mid-tones and I was trying to get the colours right. I was working really hard on my colour mixing um, but because I was only using mid-tones and not exploiting the lights and the white of the paper and the darkest darks for the contrast by using very strong paint, um, my paintings were all rather sort of wishy-washy and sort of bland if you know what I mean. Um, it was only as I became a bit more experienced and actually saw a small clip of a video by the great teacher and painter Ron Ransom and watched him do a little bit of painting. He was painting a small sort of vignette with trees, land and a bit of sky. He painted it incredibly simply but he started off with very very pale distant trees that were the same sort of consistency of watercolour that I was used to using. But then he gradually dipped into stronger and stronger paint and lots of it, virtually tube consistency, to produce the most amazing trees and darks with really good contrast against the pale distant background. And it was sort of a light bulb moment for me that actually it didn't really matter what colours he was using. What was more important was the amount of paint that he used to create these contrasts of dark against light. So I think that whether or not you're like me and prefer a limited palette and kind of push the colours a little bit far, like here, I'm, on, I'm only using sepia and Payne's grey, so two colours for this whole painting. Um, but 
what I'm trying to do is really push the contrast here and there so that uh, my misty distance is really distinguished by the fact it's lots of pale, sort of almost disappearing marks that contrast against the stark, sort of dark colours of my rocks. I could do this in any colours, really. But also, if you were to use local colour to paint this sort of scene, that would be equally as valid. But the thing would be to remember to keep some really light areas and some white of the paper and also go really dark because that will emphasise the light areas. Um, and it's easier to do it, really, the way that I do it with limited palettes. Um, and sort of approximations and the kind of colour schemes that I prefer. But if you're using local colour, then it's really worth making sure that you use the full range of contrasts within the colour mixing that you achieve for each colour. It can be a really useful exercise to do um, a quick tonal sketch or a value sketch of your planned painting to make sure that you've got a good balance of darks, midtones, and lights and that the composition works properly. And then if you're going to use local colour, it would be good to do a colour sketch to make sure that you're able to then translate the tones into your colour work. Because as I said before, once you get into trying to get um, contrast into your colours, it just becomes a little bit more difficult than when you're using monotone, i.e. one colour, or just two or three colours. Um, so it's good to practice and make sure that you can achieve the full range of tonal values from all of your colours. Sometimes, as you paint, um, you, you can sometimes be a bit unsure as to whether you've developed enough contrast in certain areas, enough lights and darks against the midtones. And a useful way of checking this can be to take your camera or your phone um, and take a photograph of your painting. Um, and sometimes that's just enough. Seeing it through the lens of the camera can give you a fresh view and you can see whether or not you've got enough contrast or whether you need to add some more. But if you're still not sure, then there's usually an editing suite on our phones where you can turn your photograph into black and white. And if you do that straight away, you'll be able to see where your lights, your darks and your midtones are and whether or not you've got enough contrast. Um, what you can also do as well, to a certain extent, is you could pop, pop on a pair of really dark sunglasses and look at your painting through those sunglasses to see if you've got a strong enough range of tonal values. So I hope this is, um, that you found this sort of useful or interesting or maybe even thought provoking. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, of course, it's, you know, as I said, only my opinion and my views, um, but it's very much the way that it's a philosophy that I kind of use when I paint. Um, for me, the most important thing is to really uh, push my contrasts. And very often, if I've got an area that kind of looks a bit murky or a bit muddy, um, I can I can lift it by either adding some extra dark areas around it to make that muddy area sort of look lighter and pop more or I can sort of lift some paint out of something that's looking a bit dark and a bit murky um, or even add some white gouache or white gel pen and that in turn will really pop against the sort of murkier dark um, so you can make adjustments like that um, as you go, just sort of adding little tweaks and changes here and there to your painting just to increase and enhance your lights and your darks and to make sure that your midtones aren't overtaking too much. 
so here you can see I'm finishing off my painting by painting in um, the silhouette of the eagle. Now, I'm sorry that my head's getting in the way here. Um, if I'd known that my head would be getting in the way, I think I would have um, brushed my hair. So sorry about that. But um, one of those things, I think I'm concentrating quite intently here because my semi-abstract mountains um, really do need, I think, this sort of fairly realistic silhouette of a soaring eagle um, just to kind of put them into context, if you know what I mean. So I'm trying to make sure that I get this right and keeping it simple at the same time. So sorry about that, head of mine. <laughs> I think what I should have done is zoomed the camera in a little bit more. But you can see now what I mean about contrast being more important than, than colour. Um, we don't really get many eagles that are just, just that sort of blacky brown colour. But as you look up against the light of the sky, then the bird becomes silhouetted and sort of backlit, if you know what I mean. Um, so that's what I'm trying to achieve here. But in actual fact, the contrast that I've got from the bird against the pale sky is what's working more so than the colour. So I'm just making some minor adjustments. Um, the lower wing was a bit longer than the upper wing so I've lengthened the pin feathers on that side and I'm just hoping that that gives me just a simple illusion of the bird soaring and rising above this rocky ridge. So thanks so much if you've got this far I'm um, listening to my ramblings again. Um, and I hope you found it interesting. Um, as I said before, please um, put any comments or thoughts in the comments below and I'll be really interested to, to read and see what you think about this issue and with some of you, whether or not you've made the same sort of discovery when you were first starting, uh, that you were finding that you were mostly painting in mid-tones and not leaving enough pale areas or putting in those really dark, dark accents to make the painting pop and to give everything more shape and form. But also remember as well that it's important to realise that you need to use plenty of paint. Don't scrimp on the paint. Um, if your watercolours are looking sort of fairly bland, um, it's probably, it could be that you've not got enough pigment in your paint mixtures and maybe a bit too much water. So have a go with some darker paint and, and see how it looks. So here's the finished painting and I really enjoyed painting it. I mean, it is very, very sort of um, semi-abstract, but that's what I like to do sometimes. Um, I like to just let myself go and paint in the moment and just create something that's kind of um, more suggestive than, than sort of overtly realistic. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Um, I mean, to be honest, if you didn't like the video, um, please give it a thumbs down so that I get some feedback. Um, because any interaction that you make is, is going to be really useful for my reach um, with uh, YouTube's algorithm. Um, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, that really helps my reach too. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified whenever I post another video. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. Take care then. Bye.